okay, so kind of wanted to make a, a mini series about uh, electricity and solar after an SHTF event. Um, kind of just going over the basics of, you know, power and stuff like that. Um, kind of my the reason why that's bringing it up for me is that I saw an article about um, next year we're supposed to have a really bad solar storm, which can cause a CME. And uh, allegedly, they're already saying that it's there's a good chance it's going to wipe out at least internet for a while. Um, and think of all the stuff that runs on internet. Um, now that's my tinfoil hat side says that, you know, the power is going to go out. We're going to have internet, and, you know, chaos, cats and dogs living together, you know, total pandemonium versus my practical side saying nothing's going to happen. You're just fucking crazy. Anyways, I'm going to quit rambling. Um, first, I want this one. I want to talk about uh, electrical meters because there's a lot of people out there that think this is these are absolute voodoo. And, you know, look at this thing. Look at how many settings it has on it. How the hell am I not going to blow myself up looking at this? So let's go over. Let's go over this pretty quickly. I'm going to try to keep this under five minutes. Um, and I'm not... I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff that I know you're not going to need. Like this down here is for testing um, transistors. That's what the PN, the NPN and PNP stand for. Along with this right here, the HEF or HFE. You're not going to even need that. Don't worry about it. We're going to mostly focus on DC volts, AC volts, DC amperage, and... Uh, um, the big one down here, or the more the the high current, ten amp, um, and uh, the diode reading. So, for most twelve volt battery stuff, you want to keep it on the twelve volt setting, um, because that you'll get the most clarity. You'll get two digits over into the the hundreds of a volt. So. Let's go ahead and put this meter on this guy and you can see that this 9 volt battery is good saying 9.32 volts versus this bad one that's saying 2.9 volts hence the reason why I call it a 9 volt battery um, now if you had it up at the 200 volt range it will still read the voltage just fine it just you won't get that 100th digit which in most cases it's fine. Um, most likely you'll never need, I hope you don't need, unless you're checking solar stuff, is you'll never need that thousand volt mark. Um, now, you know, again, if you're checking a car, you could have it on 20 or 200 volts. Let's just keep on 20, the 20 volts just to be, keep it normal. Now, another cool thing to note is if you take, I'm putting the red on the negative, so see how it's all of a sudden have that negative mark coming in front of it? That indicates that the positive, which is the red lead, is on the negative terminal. So your polarity is reverse. Now if we flip it over, it'll go away. Is this voltage read the same? Yes, it does. It's The, the only thing is, you just, it's a good note to have to keep an idea on polarity because you need to know polarity um you know positive positive negative negative and sometimes just wires like at back of solar panels they just come out of the solar panel anyway um now for um like let's say you need to check uh to see if a wire is connected together you want to go to the ohm setting, which has got the mega ohm symbol. So you want to go down to 200 because that's the lowest setting. Any of these should work, but um, just keep it at the the less the lower the ohms, the less resistance the wire has. So. It's, you know, you got these go connect together, you got 13 ohms, whatever. 
that's pretty low. It should be fine. I think the part of the Chinesium cheap meter is coming out right now with the meter jumping around. Um, but that's just to check, make sure two wires are connected. Um, the DC amperage settings, I'd recommend try being very, very, very careful with it because you can blow your meter up. You have to take this lead. Oh, oh, did I just break it? Or am I just crazy? I think I'm just crazy. You can just move it up to the this guy right here. And then... Move it over to uh, amperage. And now you can put this inside of a circuit. So hold on, let me... I got an idea. Okay, so you have a battery here. And you want to check... The, how much current this light bulb is pulling because you can test a lot by test, testing amperage. You break the wire. You break the wire. You take your leads and you test from the battery. Basically, make it so that the power has to go through the meter and come back out. That's how you measure it. Now, mind you, if this is greater than 10 amps, it's going to blow a fuse in this thing. And then that's going to be a bad time because you're going to have to find a fuse for that. Um, versus voltage, you want to take and you want you want to take your leads and, you know, test in like um, the positive and the negative to test the voltage on the like this. And you should get you know, your battery voltage, whatever should be in between it, whatever it is. Like at this light, it's a light. Imagine this light is not on. You're going to test the negative and the positive, And you should see battery voltage there. If you see battery voltage there, that light is bad. So I hope this makes sense. Like I'm just going over the real, real basics. The Now, the last thing I want to cover is DC volts. Just keep it at the... 200 volt setting um, unless you're um, no you think it might be over 200 volts if it is over 200 volts and you're on the 200 volt setting it's not going to do much it might say um, you know just say give you a weird reading that's why you go over to 750 if you need it um, now but uh, I'd recommend not testing try to minimize touching with testing with this, uh, like a AC over 120 volts. Um, that's about it. I can think off off the top of my head. Um, never, ever, ever leave your meter on the amperage because it is a real bad time to leave it in there right, and then go back to testing, you know, a battery. Um, what's going to happen is that you're going to blow that fuse out of there if you go to testing normal testing voltage normally. So again, that's why I recommend having a lightweight meter for like you know um, SHTF uh, event because then you can figure out what you need to do from there. Um, anyway. If you have any ideas what I should do next, uh, leave them down in the doobly-doo. Um, I'm going to keep on going over a little bit um, more details on our subjects as we go along with electricity and other whatnots. But I'm going to try to keep the stuff basic for everyone. If you don't have, if you have a question, please leave it down below. If I don't reply to you, I'm pretty sure someone will. Um, like everything else, keep it respectful and uh, grow your own food and become ungovernable. Have a great day.